And I believe God strongly that the Almighty God that will come to meet us will meet us at the point of our needs in the name of Jesus Christ. Without much ado, I want to have the uh, opening prayer straight away that we can ask that. Believing God that as many that have uh, been invited, they will be here to join us. Please, if you are picking your coffee and your staff, please you can come up and let's uh, start. God bless you in Jesus' name. Even as I call on our pastor, White, to give us the opening prayers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. Let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, King of Kings, Great I Am, the one who was at the East. Praise the Lord. The one who says yes and no one can say no. Yes. The reason why we slept last night and woke up this morning. The greatest of the greatest healer, comforter. Help out the helpless. The one who says, Call upon me and I will hear you. We bring thanks to you this morning for all that you've done for us. Yes. We bring thanks to you for all that you've done for this ministry. For individual here, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all adoration. Father, we are nothing without you. We have been nothing without you. And we make this confession to say that we can never be anything without you. Without you, we're everything. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you and thank you and thank you. We cannot thank you enough. Yes. Father, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, we come before thee. If there's any way we've fallen short of yes. your glory, please show us mercy. Amen. Forgive us in Jesus' name. Amen. Things of commission, omission, transgressions, the one we deliberately committed. Father, please show us your mercy yes. and cleanse us with the blood of your Son. God Almighty, we commit today's program into your hands. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone that will come Let's in Lord. this morning, we have an encounter with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Nobody goes into your house and remain the same. Nobody will go. Nobody is permitted in the name that is above all names. That is the name of Jesus to so go back to somewhere in Jesus' name. Amen. Touch your people. Touch your church. Touch this country. Touch us individually. And at the end of today's program, we will all have the fullest God to say, thank you, Father. Everyone that you are going to use this morning, Father, let them speak from your throne of grace. Thank you, Father. Thank we you. seal this prayers with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. And then, as it's coming, I want to appreciate God Almighty and uh, for, for our hosts, the angel of this great ministry, yes. uh, St. Thomas AME Zion Church, Abbotsford. That is our very own Reverend Edward uh, Holmes. Reverend Edward Holmes. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. We've been together and we continue to be together to the eternity in Jesus' name. And I want to recognize also our very own praise the Lord. We met several times and uh, he said he's going to be here today. Unfortunately, no, today happened to be his birthday. Am I right, sir? Today, he told me that today is going to be, we will be celebrating his birthday. Hallelujah. So, please, you are welcome very much, sir. Our Reverend Dustley. God bless you, sir. We are very, very happy to see you here today. 
And then I want to welcome our own also, a very young uh, sister of ours. It's our friend, it's our sister, it's our very own. Hallelujah. Whether the enemy like it or not, she's going to win this election in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of God, she's going to win the election. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You know where I came from, from Africa, Nigeria. But we make some prayers, just little prayer. You will hear a resounding amen. amen. In the sounding amen. Yes. Am I communicating this morning? Yes. Yes. I said she's going to win this election. Yes. That's our very own. Our very own. Our big sister. Big strong and reliable. Pat Fisher. You are welcome. Thank you are welcome. Thank you. And then before I read my notes here, I want to appreciate God also for the um uh, the leaders of this great church, St. Thomas, they have designed our mommy and our daddy sitting at the back. God bless you. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we will be looking, by the grace of God, on the future of the church. That's the key note yes. I address today. The future of the church. That's the team. Hallelujah. And our Reverend. Roger McKenzie will be doing justice very much to that. And uh, the second one uh, this morning will be uh, coming from our host, Reverend Peter Hoops, and he'll be talking about the power of prayers in sustaining the church, the power of prayers in sustaining the church. These are great two topics that God wants to, to, want to use us to know, and then from here, we we'll begin to work towards it and run with it, I'm believing God for all our churches and for those ministers that will be here today. Our churches will be to take a new tone and be our spirituality or to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Not only spirituality, the populating the kingdom of the enemy and populating the kingdom of God to his own glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The transformational church, the transformational church, in over two decades of study, and they are researching the church. I have come to, I have come across several visions and mission. Hallelujah. Statements of church of churches. Examples are we exist to make commerce grace. You will see statements as we exist to do what? To make commerce grace. Not only that, you will see also that we are called to prosper, promote, and preserve people. Number three, we exist to bring greatness to people. Number four, we are called to raise role models. Number five, we exist to bring royal ability and the love and love to the people. And lastly, we exist to make greatness common. These are what you will see. <laughs>
God. You feel the presence of God. You feel the glory of God. And immediately, your healing starts from that point. Am I communicating this morning? Amen. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth though that are is, and let everyone that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Depart from iniquity. I am not preaching, it's just a message for all of us. Hallelujah. Depart from iniquity. Iniquity has taken over the church today. Hallelujah. But because God wants to transform our church, God wants to reform, God wants to reposition our church. Hallelujah. To us. That's why He's bringing us together today. Praise the Lord. God wants to make our ministers to be bold enough to preach about sin, to preach about immorality, yes. to preach about adultery, to preach that divorce. Is what is anti, is an antichrist. Am I communicating this morning? Yes. That divorce is what is antichrist. Romans chapter twelve and verse one. Say, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Number two, and be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is the purpose of God for us. And His word is here and amen. Transformation is complete change of character of someone. It is divine process that God designed according to His plans and purpose for our lives. Transformation is in three poles. One, every born again Christian must be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ as a true ambassador of Christ. Hallelujah. God is not magic. Our God is a living God. And I pray God that for those of us who are here today, you are the one that God wants to use. If God can use 12 to transform the whole world, yes. Hallelujah. God can use you, God can use me. It is not by mistake that we are here today, that in death of eternity, that all of us will be under this auditorium to hear this word That's and right. to take the message back yes. and begin to work on it so that our society can be contagious with Jesus. Yes. That our nation, United States of America, can be also be affected by the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, going back to our first place of law. That very soon, we will no more hear about divorce. Very soon, we will no more hear about, about violence in our society. Very soon, we will no more hear about those things that are against the gospel of Christ. That we begin to know that the place of God, that the gospel of God supers science. Science is good, but the place of God, the gospel of Christ supersedes the place of science. Hallelujah. And that is the purpose of this uh, summit. First John chapter 3 and verse 1 says, Behold, what manner of love that the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, who on the world knoweth us, not because it knows us not. Verse 2, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear that we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we should be like him. As for as we shall also see him as he is, verse 3. And every man that has this book in him purified himself unto as he is pure. First Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. Now there we are ambassadors for Christ. We are all ambassadors all for Christ. And though God did bestow you and me, hallelujah. That we pray in Christ, stand by you, by Him, reconciling us to God. Number two is that every minister must be transformed to genuine and faithful ministers of Christ, that He is able to minister transformation to others. Hallelujah. This you can see in the Acts of chapter 9, verse 3 and, and to 9. We saw the apostles. And they ministered 
transformation message to the congregation. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Let a man so uh, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of the of Christ and stewards of the mastery of God. Verse 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be what? Be faithful. That a man be faithful. Hallelujah. That a woman be faithful. I pray for that after this time out, our church will transform so, so much so that many men will be the prophet to the church. If you look at the church of today, women are picking over. Am I, am I complicated? Yes. They are not involved yes. yes. in that. But yes. because men have, men have sat at the bar. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's not the best. That's not the best. The purpose of this summit is to begin to encourage us, we few men that are here today, we few ministers that are here today, that we need to go out, we need to leave our comfort zone and go and do more of evangelism. And God will give us the power in the name of Jesus Christ. You discover that women find it easy to come to the church easily. Easily. They don't go out there these days. Yes. yes. God bless you, women. God bless you, men. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And lastly, every church must be transformed into authentic and righteous Christian community that can bring transformation to every life. <coughs> every life. Every life. And God will do for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We we'll go quickly to the next uh, item, Hallelujah, which is going to be prayer for the church, and I will call on our very own evangelist, uh, evangelist Sonia Martins, to lead us for the few minutes, ten minutes for this particular prayers, strong prayer for all. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, Pentecost, Holy Ghost, works in the Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. 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 Pray. Join me in prayer. Amen. Glory to God. Father, this morning, we come before you, Yahweh. We come to worship you. We come to lift you up. We come to exalt your name. For your name alone is worthy to be praised. And here we are, a group of people, God who come before you, God, and as I look, and we are representing the church, some is coming from the north, some is coming from the west, some is coming from the east, and others are coming from the south, and oh, we are all coming from you. different backgrounds yes. and yes. different culture, and we want to thank you, God. We want to thank you because you have brought us us, oh God, you have taught us, and the word declare, God, that we are a chosen generation of holy people, called out, elected, selected to do your work, oh Father. And so we want to thank you for the blood of Jesus who died for our sins, who redeemed us from sin. And as we come, we acknowledge that we have failed you, we have sinned and been short of your glory. In so many ways, oh God. And so as we come this morning, hallelujah, we come and present the church collectively yeah. before you, God. Amen. You told your disciples before you left, they should go to the upper room, hallelujah, and they should there wait for the promise, yeah. the promise of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. And when the Holy Ghost came, they were fire. Yeah. They were on fire and yeah. they they were united yes, in one cause. Yes, and so we are praying for the lateral rain. We are praying that you will touch everything. Yes, yes. yes. That is in this place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That, that, that anointing yes, Lord. that the young will. 
He has been in ministry all his adult life. And in 2012, he was elevated to district elder in International Bible Way Lord Life. He serves on various committees and boards and is a national examiner for his denomination. Uh, he holds a Bachelor of Arts degree, a Master degree in Public Administration, and a Master in Divinity, as well as he just graduated from NYU. He is married and has three children. Thank you. Let's welcome up. 
Thank you, Julia. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Yes, and for our hands to praise. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in his sight. And also, I don't need it. And give God praise for the moderator today and the organized doctor. Amen. I, I got a loud voice. I don't really need it. We can have raw seats. You'll really be able to hear me quite well. I like to um, acknowledge um, the Spirit of, uh, of God, who's the head of my life, and would not be who I am if it were not for the Lord. Amen. Amen. He gets all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Also, like to acknowledge my wife in her absence, who's at work right now, and also the um, saints who abundant life where she tends to work here. Elder Yvonne and Warwick Malcolm, put our hands together for them. Amen. And also, I'd like to acknowledge the saints from Abundant Life who are on Zoom. Sister Nasita, thank you for joining. Our brother Juan Lancaster, thank you for joining. And, bro, and Sister September, thank you for joining on Zoom as well. Good to see Julia. Good to see David today. Let's give them a hand. They're so faithful. And they well. And their support of Reverend Gabriel because it does take a team. It's not just one person that's doing the work, but it's a team also. It's a team ever. I'm not going to be before you long. I'll be before you just a few short minutes. I won't be long, but I will be strong. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me quickly to the book of Matthew 16. Have it on your phone or your iPad or wherever you have the device. Matthew 16, and I'm going to read from 13 to 20. And I'm going to be talking about the future of the church today. Matthew 16, 13 to 20. When you find it, just respond with a hearty amen. Amen. Oh, y'all doing real good. When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men, uh, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah. And one of the prophets, um, he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Lest art thou... Uh, where was I? Um, and, son, and, and, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, sovereign for Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Let's pray, most gracious and kind, loving God, we thank you for this uh, meeting today. We thank you for everyone that's here, everyone that's in line, everyone that will watch the replay. We thank you that you will touch ears and hearts and minds. We pray that this will encourage those that are working in the vineyard and those that have been called by you, God, to continue to do your work and to restore hope, hope that the church future is in good hands and it will continue and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be before you a few minutes, as I mentioned. Um, in order to understand the future of the church, we must examine the current state of the church and also look at the history. When we go back in history, Thomas Jefferson in the 1800s predicted that the church would be closed and the church would be no more. Here it is now, 2023, 223 years later, we are still here. Amen. When we see that the number of Christians have dropped in the United States. 
64% right now, and it came from 90%. We see even the number of Christians in Europe has even dropped as well. There's only one area right now where the church is growing so strongly, and that area is called the Global South. I'm going to teach a little bit before I preach. The Global South, amen, consists of Africa, Latin America, and Asia. That's the Global South where the church is increasing. People get excited here when they hear a mega church has 20,000 people, 30,000 people. That's not a mega church. The largest church right now is in South Korea with 600,000 people as membership in South Korea. 600,000 people are members of that church in South Korea that attend every single week. So now when you put the 600,000 people against the ones that have 20 and 30,000 people, that looks really small to the 600,000 people. But I want to also say that it's not even about the numbers. As the Bible says, when two and three are gathered, we're in the mix. Sometimes you can get discouraged by just a few people, amen. Not because you have a lot of people, it means that you have a private church. Some places are swelling, and they're there for the wrong reason. I want to say that the church has declined today because the people who preach and teach the gospel have deviated from the message of the cross. Oh, the Bible says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. What people have done, if they have moved away from the message of the cross. What's the message of the cross, Bishop? That Jesus came, and he died for our sins, and he rose on the third day with all victory in his hand. Amen. We moved into areas of, of our prosperity, where people want to name it and claim it. Amen. And want the next, uh, want more money and want more material things and the things of life, amen, and less of Jesus. That's the thing that now they've made the way very broad, but they've included things and they've put things into the gospel that's not there, amen. The unadulterated word of God has not been preached and not being preached the way that it needs to be preached. I remember many years ago, Churches would be so packed, and let me tell you something, pastors and bishops would not be afraid to preach sin. But these days, you could count in your hands one time that folks will want to preach about sin, amen. When you turn on the TV ministry, you don't hear sin mentioned a lot, amen, because if they talk the wrong talk, they're going to censor them and get them off the air. I know that I'm talking, right? So they got to talk good stories, and they got to give you a feel-good message, amen, and make you feel comfortable in your mess, amen. But the way it was a long time ago, you would be preached to so hard about your sin, you would become uncomfortable, and you would want to start living right if you're not living right, amen. When you look at the book of Matthew chapter 16, we see that Jesus questions his disciples and let them know and wants to find out what they think he is or who he is, and what also others think who he is. He says, you know what? I want to know who, who I am. You got to know, first of all, who Jesus Christ is. He was able to get the answer when he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. You must understand that foundation is important. If you don't have a foundation, you don't have anything to build on. I thank and praise God for a good foundation. Now, because the foundation is necessary. The Greek word for church means ecclesia, E-K-K-S-E-L-I-A. It means an assembly, a congregation. That's what it means. And I want to let you know that the church future is real good today because there's two churches. Uh, can I take my time and break it down a little bit? Uh, we have the church universal. Uh, that means that the whole assembly of the people who are saved, both living and dead. Uh, do you have some relatives that have moved on with the Lord? Uh, they're in the church still. Uh, they're in the universal church. Uh, the local church has the same people in it. And it has the geographical areas in the different parts of the country. Amen. 
The church also, the characterization of the church is the body of Christ, is the household of God, is the temple of God, is the bride of Christ. Uh, you must believe that the church has such significance and relevance. My God, I don't know how some people can't do without the church. Amen. That's why you got to have a place where you can enter. It's put with praise, uh, a place where it's all about Jesus, uh, a place where you're going to hear the word, where you're going to sing the songs of Zion, you're going to be able to give God praise, you're going to come one way and leave another way, amen. I know that the pandemic hit, uh, and I know that some churches closed down. Uh, and memberships went down, huh? but the word of God still continues to go forward huh? in spite of whatever comes our way. We thank and praise God that the church is here to stay. Amen. The foundation of the church is strong. Huh? Some people debated whether it's built on Peter, Petro, or Petro. But let me tell you, it's built on Jesus Christ. Huh? On Christ, the solid what did I say? Oh, it's uh, the church is needed, amen. And today, amen, we must know that we, oh God, are the church as well. Huh? Wherever you go, you are the church. Huh? It's not just about the government, but wherever you go, you are the church. Huh? Give God some praise. We see that the church has been under attack for many years. There's some people in some countries can't even worship freely. They gotta worship on the ground. <laughs> but we see that sometimes, uh, my God, when you go through some stuff, uh, and when you're going through some things, uh, my God, it drives you closer to God. Uh, what the enemy meant for bad, uh, God got a nice way of turning it around uh, and making it for good, amen. Uh, I love a song that says, I can't even walk uh, without you holding my hand. Uh, the mountains are high, and the valleys are too wide, uh, but down in my knees, uh, I'm here to stand. Uh, I can't even walk uh, without you holding my hand. Uh, the church this morning has victory. Uh, the church this morning will be on the rise. Uh, the remnant of here still. Uh, you better thank God for the remnant that remains. Uh, put your hands if you're part of the remnant that remains. Amen. If you're a leader in the church this morning, this afternoon, get to the place where you're going to be, my God, where you're not going to come down. You got to be like Nehemiah. As he was in Babylonian captivity, and he was called, he was called back by God himself uh, to go back and rebuild the gates. Uh, he was able to go back uh, and in spite of who wanted him to come down, uh, he said I'm not coming down. Uh, is there anybody in the midst this morning uh, who says I'm not going to come down? Uh, I'm going to stay on the wall. Uh, I'm going to stay building. Uh, my God, even Jeremiah was discouraged. Uh, Jeremiah said curse be the day uh, that I was born. Uh, my mother's born should have been my resting place. But Jeremiah said, every time I feel like throwing in the towel, it's like fire in my bones. You got to get to a place where you will not let the fire go out. You got to know that it's on you. You got to talk right now. You got to walk right up. I know this church hurt. I know that sometimes you can be all oh, afflicted, right? But the Bible say, uh, it was good that I was afflicted. Uh, because that's where your anointing comes from. Uh, that's where your breakthrough comes from. Uh, don't you throw a pity party for yourself. Uh, you got to say, God, why not God? Uh, who do you think this is? Not that you can suck. Him. You're going to reign with him, and you got to get to a place where he says, I'm going to wait to my change. The Lord is here with us, and he has not given up on the church. The church is going to go higher. The church will exist. The church will rise. Some are going to come to be saved, set free, and delivered. Leave it in my bone. It may not come when you want, but it comes right in time. This is no place like the church of the living God. Amen. Let's stand together and give God some praise. Almost done. The church will have 
ultimate victory. The church is the place where you can come for the laying of hands. Church is the place where you can get a word. Church is the place where you can get communion. Church is the place where you can get face-to-face -face eye contact with someone that's able to look in your eyes uh, into the depths of your soul. Uh, the church is the place where God made for us a meeting place uh, for us to come together. Uh, you can't get this at home the same way. But when you make the sacrifice uh, to get out your bed uh, and to put, my God, your clothes on <laughs> and to drive wherever you got to go on a walk, take a bus or a train there. Uh, the one thing I like about God is that he honors sacrifice. Uh, and if you make a sacrifice, uh, God will bless you for the sacrifice uh, that you make. Amen. Uh, God, God, it's not easy at times. Uh, but if you make the sacrifice. Sacrifice. Uh, is there anybody here uh, who should not be tired of making sacrifice? Uh, I want you to continue to bless the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, and his praise shall continually uh, be in our mouth. Uh, God requires sacrifice. So, my God is in the book of Genesis, all the way to Jesus on the cross. So, God said, His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So, my God, if we suffer with Him, we can reign with Him. It's not going to be easy, God. It's not going to be a crystal stairs. It's not going to be pine in the sky. You're going to have a suffer. You're going to have to go through. When you get to a place where you say, God, you save me up. Get with my trust And I'm going to wait for my trust in you. And At the end of the day, on the first day, the church is children. My God, the church is the place where you can find salvation. Yeah. Church is the soul, saving, saving thing. That's where we had a relationship with Jesus. That's where we were introduced to him. Not in the party in the basement. Not in the club. Not in the shopping mall. Not at your job. Those are all the places where the demons may roam. But when you come here, oh God, it's holy ground. Where there are angels all around us. Oh God. And we can say, Lord, Lord God Almighty. Where we can say, we're standing on holy ground. The future of the church is bright. Yeah. In my closing, the future of the church is bright. Yeah. It may look dim from time to time. Huh? But I want to say that the future of the church is bright. Yeah. You see, he promised that the gates of hell yeah. shall not prevail. He knew that it was built on him. It's not built on the music. Huh? It's not built on even the preacher. Huh? It's not built on the saints. Huh? It's not built on the tech. Huh? But it's built on Jesus Christ. Huh? It's built on him. And we got to get that in our heads. Huh? People want to have a big choir. Huh? They want to have all the best instruments. Huh? But you can have that. And God is still not in the midst. Huh? But you better know that it's built on Jesus Christ. Huh? You better know that it's built on his blood. Huh? His blood that he shed for you and me on Calvary's cross. There is no place like the church. We wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. It's the place where we can come and we can get some peace. We can get a word from the Lord. We can get a touch from the word, and the word will do what the word will do for us. The Lord knew that the day would come when the church would be under attack. He knew that it would be difficult, and that's exactly why, after he talked about who he was, he jumped right into the church. The word of God promises, promises this, promises this. Even though the church is born in the book of Acts yes. on the day of Pentecost. But he said that, they, that, 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 that it'll be added daily yes. to the church. Daily. You'll be added daily. Yes. And yes, you may not have the people that are coming in one after the other. But to know that different things are being added to the church. Yes. 
See, we walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. We must never be discouraged when we see people are not coming. Prophecies are being fulfilled. Yes. It means that there will be a falling away at times. But it also, God, is going to raise up a generation yes. that will come back to him. Yes. And they will continue the work that's in the church. Don't be worried, leaves. Don't be dismayed. Don't let God know exactly who he will target to come into the house of God yes. to do what needs to be done. God bless you and know that the church is in good hands. Put those hands. Ever. 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 I'm going to just uh, say a few things about his background, then go hear from him directly. So, Reverend Holmes was born in the Catskills area of uh, New York. Uh, he studied in SUNY Potsdam uh, in a field of IT, and then he joined the program of the AM Zion Church to become a pastor. After fulfilling all the requirements, he he was appointed to the AMC Church, St. Thomas, in Haverstraw, in 1996. Reuben Holmes is known for his loving heart. He is like a father to his congregation and is very dear to them all. He has been the pastor at St. Thomas and Zion Church since the late 1996, uh, except for a space of time when he was transferred to Ellenville and Hudson, New York. And then he was sent back to St. Thomas. So they missed him so much. Uh, and he's been in Haverstraw here in St. Thomas Church uh, to now. And uh, so I'll like to introduce to some, but some of you all know him. So please welcome our uh, Reverend. Oh. There should be a law that says, don't preach behind Christian McKinsey. Don't come behind Bishop McKinsey. It should be a law. The judge has left that law in order. He said, don't come behind Bishop McKinsey. I can set my behind down here and enjoy the rest of the service. But be it as it is, that's we have been consecrated for this moment of time. Thank God the opportunity to share with you what thus saith the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you right now for the preaching moment, teaching moment. We mercy for your love and send forth the word. Have mercy, God, upon you again in my yes. prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. 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 I have a preaching voice. I got to work on that. The Bible, Mr. McKenzie, give one from him. I want to share with you exactly what we can from a passage of scripture coming from John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Very familiar story. The woman that was trapped in adultery. The woman that was trapped in adultery. In John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. You will walk it through, the reader will walk it back. I've been pastoring here since 2000. Well, I came here in 1996. I served for eight years. I got transferred upstate New York to Hudson and Ellenville for six years. Two years in Hudson and Ellenville for four years. Then, by the grace of God, I got returned back to St. Thomas again in 2010. What happens, Amy Zion? You don't really pastor a church twice. You pastor it once. Very seldom does that happen. I've been blessed to pastor here two times. I came here to turn the history of the pastor every year, no more than five years that he had a pastor. I first came the first day here, I told people here, that has ended. I'm going to be here for a long time. And no one believed me. They didn't believe me. I said, I'm going to be here for anybody that has a pastor with the history of this church. Now, now, it ain't going to happen. I tried to tell him, hell And they went on five years of work. He got closed down. 
Everybody got discouraged. Like every five years, you get a change in the administration. And after five years, we got closed. We got closed for like six, seven, about six months. We were closed. We got reopened again. I got reappointed for three more years. We had total eight years. We got moved for six. We came back in here 13 years in second year. So the prophecy that God gave me first came here has come to pass. Hallelujah. <laughs> then God said, don't have any fundraisers raise money for the church. Don't quote me money for the church. No fundraising. No, the history of that church, we have fundraising, we have Women's Day, Men's Day, Usher Board, put the to raise money. God said, don't do that. They have a service. Don't put the emphasis to raise your money for that service. And so I follow what God said. No program to have fundraising money for this church. And do you know, it's been here, what, 20 some odd years? We ain't missed a payment on anything yet. We haven't missed a bill payment yet. We have just a light bill, phone bill, any kind of bill, nothing yet. They have no programs made money for the God has provided for us as He said He would. And the problem we have with this, as we said, with you this afternoon, is about trusting God's word. Trusting God's word. Every year we go to conference, once a year, if you're appointed to get back to our churches, my time here is up tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll be the last official day as pastor of St. Thomas. We go to conference every year to be appointed. Tomorrow ends our conference year. But so tomorrow morning, our people answer the land. I no longer have a pastor of this church. No longer a pastor of this church. We go to conference. At the conference, they have meetings and discussions about what they did last year, a, a Bible guard, a preacher, or a teacher, or leader. And we can be appointed again at the end of the conference. But our reappointment. Date will be next Saturday, so we get reappointed or disappointed. They come reappointed disappointed. You go back and go somewhere else, but you're not thinking anything at all. I'm not, I'm not ever worried about this, but I always know that God talks to me about things ahead of time, so I know where I'm going before it happens. So, in my heart and mind, God and I still are still in prayer. Whatever God says, that's what we do. I believe, I believe. As the tournament has said, I'll be back. <laughs> John chapter 8. I say that before to say that prayer is necessary. Every year we go to the conference, I always get eager genius about the following year. We're going, we're going to make it financially. We're going to grow spiritually. We're going to have members here. For at least a couple of weeks after they get reappointed. Because during that time period, I have to go in deep prayer with God. And even to discuss what's happening in this next conference year. We don't have anybody want to be here. We're a small church. It's only people get, getting aged. And you know, it's always been a concern. Who's going to come after what God's going to do next? But God opens doors that no man can close. He closes the man open. And God knows what he has prepared for his church. Revelation comes through that, comes through prayer. It comes through. By way of prayer. So we have to be people of prayer to hear the voice of, of God. And John chapter 8, this message in here for us today. Let me share with you what God gave me in regards to this. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and they set her in the midst, and say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in the act of adultery, in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what saith that? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus took down and with his ground, his finger broke on the ground as though he heard them not. When they continued asking him, lifted up himself, and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and broke on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus saw, Jesus lifted up himself and saw a number of the women, 
He said to her, Woman, where are those nine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. He said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. We are mystified as believers and what comes into our lives, what comes our way. I have learned over my years of pastoring and preaching and being a believer that nothing comes our way that God has the ability and the power to handle. Oh, yes. Yes. No part of kind of situation that we're above God's ability to resolve for us as his people. Okay, the problem that we have is we don't always trust in who we're serving. That's right. We don't trust in who we profess to be believers in. We relinquish our understanding of God and we, we stand in fear of the enemy and we tremble and we foil, make, make compromises with the enemy to keep ourselves from being hurt or being destroyed or being destroyed. Imagine this. He's standing in the temple. An angry mob of people come his way with rocks in their hand. They had got a whole crowd to come with them and come to Jesus to confront him with the, with the intention of killing him. Yes. yes. He doesn't he doesn't sweat. He don't run. He doesn't decide to get no orders. He don't get coward. He stands there almost and he stands there flat with it. How many of us are flat with it dealing with problems in our lives? Right. How many of us are flat with it trouble come our way? He didn't freak out, he didn't go screaming and howling. He didn't go yelling, he didn't go cursing, he didn't go drinking. He just stood there armed with what anointing? You have to know what you got and deal with the enemy. That's right. He knew who he was. He knew what he had. knew what he came to do. He was on a divine assignment. Yes. yes. Oh, he said this afternoon. He was on a divine assignment. Divine assignment provides us with divine protection. Yes, yes, yes. Divine and yes. We have integrity because right. God has appointed us as integrous. He has, he has committed us to the work of ministry. Yes. And therefore, all we have to do is bend our knees. Yes. Yes. Begin to fast and to pray. Almost as say in the narrow way. So when trouble comes our way, we don't have to run. We don't have to hide. We don't have to be fearful. We will stand still and watch God work things out. Yes. 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 It was Jerusalem, who was based for building up Jerusalem, and God came to him and showed, showed him a, a vision yes. of the land span of two olive trees. Yes. And you, you get the question, what these things are meant? Well, the church is fueled today by the olive trees with pressed oil in the church. We are never going to be deficient of anointing. I don't care what Donald Trump does, what finally, what they, um, Bob Sanders does whatever happens with Putin or Kim Jong Un. The church has power enough to spare. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And he doesn't just punch a wet the bell. We have to be able to stand still and observe God's working out instrument in our lives. We don't have to run and be fearful. We have the power of God at our side, yes. at our disposal. So Christ, knowing who he was, what he had set to do, he stood there. Now, I'm saying this today. These Pharisees and the scribes came to kill Jesus. That's right. Yes. When the people, the devil attacks you, he's not just attacking you. All that concerns you is involved as well. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. That will attack you. Yes. He'll attack me. All that's concerned with you. Yes. Christ, I have come to seek and to save. Who? The sick, the lost. I came to preach. Yes. I came to the blind. Yes. To the captive. I came to preach and set people free. He came to do all of that. These individuals, not just after Jesus. If he dies, the work that he came to do would die. He became the same, like the same, if Jesus died. He was on divine assignment. The devil attacks us, not just attacking us. He got the husband, after wife, after children, grandchildren, neighbors, friends. If you're a pastor, after the whole flock, the devil comes to destroy 
you all that resemblance is potential for you. But if you know that you know that you know that you know who you, who you, where you come from, who by your side, yes. who's got your back, what you need to do, you stand up and yes. yes. you're above. Yes. Like God told hey, Joshua, and when your feet shall trod, that has already given you. We got to, wherever we are, we have victory wherever we are. Yes. We by virtue of us having those private moments alone with God. Hallelujah. We have to be people who are dedicated to seeking the face of God continuously. Other before Jesus, who makes you wonder about that. He he was God. Yes. Came from God. He prayed the, earth, the whole earth in the world, but even he had to go and pray. He said, in a minute. That's right. He, he had to go alone himself and pray yeah. to his father. Yeah. Yeah. Get instruction. Get the strength to fight the things that were coming his way as, a, as an ambassador for Christ Jesus. Because he was a man of prayer. When the issues came to him, he began to use the weapons that God gave us. Ah, yes. anointing, prophecy, yes. word of knowledge, yes. wisdom, yes. how to work miracles, and the healing. Yes. And the Spirit has given us the ability to fight the fight, good fight of faith, yes. and the Bible has given us to profit us in all things. Amen. There's no failure with God. No, no failure with God's weapons of warfare and not carnal. I just got to pull it down our strongholds. And here was Jesus. And this is those, those Pharisees who described, we're watching their hands, <coughs> fighting against a stronghold. Yes. I like the fact he says, there, there, this is cool. Yeah. He ain't nervous. He ain't sweating. He's like, oh, man, he's like, yeah, okay, bring it. We have to be able to say to people, the devil, bring it. Yes. Bring it, devil. Yes. I ain't, I, I ain't scared. I ain't scared. Yes. Bring it. Yes. If everything he can let me win, I got the ability to resolve it. Why God allows things to happen to us? I'm going to say this for our enrichment, yes. for our understanding, yes. to see God's power yes. at work. Yes. Whatever God brings all the way, He's already given us the grace to deal with. Yes. 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 We have God's grace by God overcome everything that comes our way. But here comes Jesus, here, here comes Jesus. Well, it's a taking the dog in the very act of adultery. As a kid, he yeah, sure as a kid, I didn't know what he meant. I got older, but the word of God understood for so the setup. They had, had set up an act to get to kill Jesus, get him in a trap to confound him, and they didn't realize who they were dealing with. Ah, that's right. That's right. They came at him. This is bold. I said, God, why do you allow the devil to come at Jesus like that? Look at this man. The devil got dressed that morning. Had their breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe got on YouTube a little while. <laughs> Had a little thing to plan in action. Yeah. But it was well thought out. You don't have to have the thing. And he had planned this. Yeah. The devil had his tricks against us. He planned a thing. People backbiting against you or while you're sleeping. You know, I did how they want to get you some mess. So they had the, the, their plan already mapped out. They didn't let they didn't execute their plan. I said, God, why are you let them do that to us? Why are you let them come at us as your people? I said, God, I give you power to deal with it. We yeah. have power to overcome everything the enemy goes at you yeah. if you just be people who are afraid. I get weapons of warfare, not carnal. That's right. That's right. Fighting right. God to pull it down of those strongholds. But I can't pull that down. I ain't been a person who's been in prayer. I have been fasting, praying, reading God's word, yeah. or in fellowship. Yeah. And I can have any power to deal with the enemy's tactics against me or against us as believers. So they came. And Jesus begins to exercise this gifting, yeah. discernment. Yes. Wisdom, ability yes. to prophesy and to tear down the enemy's stronghold. Yes. What did he do, first of all? He heard them say he was caught in the act, the, the very act of adultery. The question is, how do you catch someone in the very act of adultery? 
It was a setup. And the question to be asked, where was the man? There's two of them involved in the process. The Lord said, bring us all together for the trial. Where was the man? He was there with rock in his hand. He was part of the plot with rock in his hand. And Jesus looks at this, he sees what he's dealing with. If we would take the time to examine our circumstances, you got give a discernment and wisdom. We will see everything any trying to do to us. We will know his tactics, his motives, his intentions. Yeah. We know all of that without even having to be involved in the conversations. Wasn't that the prophet Elijah when, when the king Ben had uh, King uh, Ben Ben had that was making plans against Israel, and the prophet heard what he said in the bedchamber, yeah. and then he said, "Who amongst you is betraying me?" He said, "No, not us." Is that prophet of Israel? He's gonna tell you all the secrets. He wasn't even there, but he knew. Then he goes through prayer. We have a direct hotline to God, and only be people who are steadfast in prayer. The church is suffering today. They ain't suffering because of lack of Holy Ghost. The church never going to be lacking Holy Ghost until God right. take out the world. Right. If it's lacking today, it's because of us. Who are God's ambassadors are not bending our knees enough before the Lord to get the answer. Right. God to deal with the problems we're going through. Pope Rose a couple of years ago, uh, Donald Trump, Donald Trump fever. They thought it was covering over Donald Trump. Why? There are people who prophesy about Donald Trump. He's the second patient, second incarnation of Jesus Christ. They were crazy with that stuff. And a lot of people got confused with that, got concerned. And we're afraid. Oh, Donald Trump president. But Donald Trump is just, is just one person. If we could diffuse that, we have been people who were of prayer. I mean, if Bishop McKenzie said sometimes we relinquish understanding who God is to conform to society. That's right. You can't conform to society. You have two people who are steadfast, That's right. unmovable, dependent upon God and God's word and God's word alone. But if we're able to do that, we'll be able to see the deceitfulness. Yes. We'll be able to see through all of the sky, yes. all of the smoke, yes. all of the mirrors, yes. and not sound the seeds that anyone else other than Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you. People have gotten their knees to this man. That's right. He's got a to this man yes. over Jesus Christ yes. himself. I said, my, my God, my God, my God. And God that's another God before me, and he put him up like he was God. And here we are. And God, what God allows, he allows us to put you to see through all the smoke screen the devil throws at us. That's right. And here Jesus saw through what they were dealing with. This woman was not taking the dog, he was set up to try to trap me to get rid of me. To get rid of me, he's gonna hurt the nation. Yes. Let me hasten on home with anything. He took three times more. He doesn't respond to their question. We owe the devil no explanation at all. We owe him no answer to anything. Devil, I owe you nothing. That's but tell you, get thee behind me. He didn't argue with the devil. He didn't answer a word that they said. What, what say you? What do you guys say about this? We can make, make, make the mistake as believers to engage in some company with the devil. Right. We don't have to. That's right. That's right. Stop talking to the devil in his turn. Yes. Yeah. 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 We, as ambassadors of the Christ, we have the weaponry of our warfare is not carnal. Devil is carnal. We can't fight the devil with devil tools. Somebody said, I heard somebody in the court of a man, I said, you can't solve the devil problem with devil tools. That's right. Depression can never be solved by alcoholism. Depression right. and, and despair can't be solved by using drugs. You can't solve devil problems with devil too. That's right. Yeah. And Jesus will have to fight by devil in his turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh she's in dog free. What, what say you? Yeah, great. Answer the question to you. And we if we if we're not people who are prayer, we're getting engaged the devil in the devil turn, and we must stop. Engaging the devil with devil mentality, with devil devices, the devil concept, the devil scheme, and to give your whole heart to put our trust, our confidence in Jesus Christ, that's right. our Lord. That's right. Pray. 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 What we speak, 
But we're, we're the business of not business of man's business, but God's business. Yes, yes. And so when Jesus stands there, he doesn't give them the answer, he takes time to pray. Yes. Don't talk. They will have to can't force you to an answer. Stop and pray. Talk to God first. Yeah. Get wisdom from God how to deal with what you're dealing with. Yes. And yes, don't really yes. don't rush. The devil was going to make a move to Jesus and make a decision. Don't devil press you with something that you ain't prayed to God about yet. That's right. We get we get rushed by the enemy, make decisions about the thing, not talking to God about it. 